It's almost hard to believe that the NFL has chosen Man of the Woods Justin Timberlake to perform the 2018 Super Bowl halftime concert. He's the man who exposed Janet Jackson's breast during the halftime show at the 2004 Super Bowl 14 years ago. That little bit torpedoed her career while Justin Timberlake, the man who ripped off Janet Jackson's top and Michael Jackson's sound, came off completely innocent. Not only that, Justin Timberlake's career has skyrocketed since then. That dude produces hit songs for kids' movies when he's not kicking it with Woody Allen. In 1989, AM Records released Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation 1814. The usage of the number 1814 represents the year the national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, was written. NFL TV ratings are famously down this year, allegedly because some football players have taken a knee during the national anthem. Janet Jackson dedicated her Rhythm Nation 1814 album to the writing of the National Anthem. Somehow, the National Football League sees fit to hire Justin Timberlake, the man who stripped National Anthem lover Janet Jackson naked during the halftime show at the 2004 Super Bowl, to perform the halftime concert at the Super Bowl again in 2018, 14 years later. But I'm supposed to be mad about football players genuflecting during the National Anthem. The Star Spangled Banner, a battle song for soldiers, was originally established as the National Anthem for the departments and agencies of the United States of America by an executive order issued by President Woodrow Wilson in 1916. The song originated as a poem written by attorney Francis Scott Key in September 1814. During the War of 1812, when the British burned down the White House, while he was trying to secure the release of a friend from captivity on board a British Royal Navy ship. Key witnessed the British bombardment of Fort McHenry. The fort's huge American flag inspired him to write Defense of Fort McHenry. A music publisher eventually matched the first stanza from Defense of Fort McHenry to a British party song called To Anacreon in Heaven, calling the new song the Star Spangled Banner. To Anacreon in Heaven is a party song written by John Stafford Smith for the Anacreontic Society. The Anacreontic Society was a private club where British men could party all night long. Encyclopedia Britannica says, ancient Greek poet Anacreon wrote both serious and light poetry. The poems quoted by later sources, however, are in praise of love, wine, and revelry. Just like the defense of Fort Mahenry, to Anacreon in Heaven has four stanzas. In defense of Fort Mahenry, each stanza ends with the phrase, or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Each stanza in to Anacreon in Heaven ends with the phrase, the myrtle of Venus and Bacchus's vine. Venus is the goddess of love, beauty, desire, sex, and fertility. Myrtle is Venus's favorite shrub also known as her sacred bush. Bacchus is another name for Dionysus, the Greek god of wine, ritual madness, fertility, theater, and religious ecstasy. We're talking about the vine of Dionysus, people. His vine. Francis Scott Key's Star Spangled Banner, with all this British party music underneath, becomes a battle song for soldiers adopted widely throughout the 1800s, the 19th century. In 1916, President Woodrow Wilson signs an executive order establishing the Star Spangled Banner as the national anthem for the departments and agencies of the United States of America. Congress passed legislation establishing the Star Spangled Banner as the national anthem in 1931. President Herbert Hoover signed that bill into law in March of 1931. I found a fascinating story published by National Review talking about a case in 1942 about saluting the flag and who has to do it. National Review. We're talking about World War II. In January of 1942, the West Virginia Board of Education passed a resolution requiring that a salute to the flag become a regular part of the program of activities in the public schools. A small group of Jehovah's Witnesses, however, declined to salute Though they were patriots, their conscience wouldn't allow them to demonstrate the required reverence for the flag. They risked punishment and persecution for their stance and appealed to the federal courts for aid. 
1943. With the Second World War still very much in doubt, the Supreme Court rendered its verdict, no official, high or petty, can prescribe what shall be orthodox in politics, nationalism, religion, or other matters of opinion, or force citizens to confess by word or act their faith therein. In 1943, the Supreme Court basically decided that the United States is good enough for people who are thinking that they don't have to be forced into saluting a symbol of anything. Somehow, some people believe that genuflecting during the national anthem at a National Football League game introduces politics into an apolitical situation. Anyone who believes the national anthem has nothing to do with politics really isn't paying attention. The national anthem is executive policy converted into federal law that rules the departments and agencies of the United States of America, including military branches.